Hey there. Have you ever thought about building a stable diffusion API that harnesses the power of control net? If so, you come to the right place. Today, we're bringing you our most anticipated tutorial on setting up a stable diffusion A1111 API with control net using RunPod Serverless. It provides a unique approach that eliminates the hassle of configuring everything in a Docker file. By doing this, you'll move all stable diffusion configuration outside of Docker. You'll be able to log into your A1111 console for configuration and management and shut it down when you're done. Meanwhile, you can still access the API using the serverless endpoint. What happens when you want to change the configuration? No problem. Just restart the stable diffusion pod and make your changes in A1111. We'll strategically utilize RunPod technologies to create a network drive, install and configure Stable Diffusion on it, and then establish a serverless API pointing towards the Stable Diffusion installation. Here's what we'll cover step by step. 1. Create a network volume. 2. Install Stable Diffusion A1111 on the network volume. 3. Develop a serverless Stable Diffusion API. And to wrap it up, we'll run a test using Postman. Let's get started by setting up our network volume. Within RunPod, navigate to My Storage. Select Create Network Volume. Name it. And define its storage capacity. I've allocated 100 gigabytes for robust model storage. Next, deploy a pod to adjust the network volume settings. Choose Run Pod Fast Stable Diffusion and deploy. Click Connect to link up with Python Jupyter. Once in Jupyter, access the A1111 run pod notebook and run all the cells. We'll run most of them without modification. For control net configuration, I'm going to install the canny model. You can install others here as well. Before starting Stable Diffusion, we'll need to move the Stable Diffusion models. These models are initially found in the slash auto models folder in the root directory, but only files stored in the slash workspace directory are included in the volume. So we'll need to move them to sit in the directory path shown on your screen. It's where Stable Diffusion expects them. In that same directory, you need to make sure to remove the preset symbolic links. At this point, you should only two models in the stable diffusion model directory, with no other files or symbolic links. Once this is achieved, you can proceed to launch A1111. Wait for it to start, then verify it's running.
now stop A1111. The appearance of a number in place of the asterisk, as well as a message saying it has exited, will confirm it stopped. Congratulations, you successfully completed the creation of the network volume and set up stable diffusion. Now we'll move on to creating the serverless endpoint. Here you have two options. The simplest is to use the pre-built Docker image for my Docker hub and use that without modification. Alternatively, if you want to build your own using the same code I used for this image, you can follow a few additional steps outlined in my helper file, link in description. For this video, I'll assume you want to take the simplest option and use the pre-built image. So back in RunPod, proceed to serverless, create a new template, name it, reference the Docker hub image shown on the screen and save. Then go to my endpoints, create a new endpoint, name it and choose the template we just created. Under Advanced, select the network volume configured earlier and create. Check the logs to keep track of its status. While here, remember to copy the serverless endpoint API ID as we'll need it shortly. We will now test our setup using Postman. First, you need to install a Postman configuration file provided in the tutorial, which can be found in the helper file. After importing the configuration file, navigate to variables and update the serverless ID we copied earlier and your API key. Once done, proceed to run sync and replace the value of API name with git control net models. It returns a list of the control net models available. There's another that returns control net modules. Check the helper file for a list of the APIs available to call. To make sure text-to-image generation is working okay, let's first generate an image without using ControlNet. Now let's dive into text to image with control net. The Postman collection includes a section where you can provide your control net arguments. In this instance, we'll use the candy module with a base 64 encoded string of black and white silhouette image of the letter A to obtain the base 64 encoded string for your own image for testing purposes. Use the website shown here. Link to the website is in the helper file in the description. 
Just upload your image, copy the encoded string, paste it into a text file, and ensure to remove the data image prefix like this. Now we are all set to make a text-to-image API call using ControlNet. Let's try a different prompt with the same image. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed it and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. Your support really helps us out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this one. We're always working on new content to help you master the latest tools and techniques in generative AI and generative media. Also, if you have questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please let us know below. We love hearing from you and your feedback helps us create better content. Until the next.